The investigators have found the bloodstains in the living room, but now they've stepped into the bedroom of a serial killer. There's a hidden trap door in the floor leading down to the killer's mystic butchering chamber. The players want to search the room. What do you do? The basic structure of a room like this, whether it's a serial killer's bedroom or an area in a dungeon, can be conceptually broken down into several parts. First, what the PCs immediately see. For example, the window, the bed, the bookcase, the Justin Bieber posters on the wall. Second, what they might see, like the faint bloodstains spotted with a perception check, or the heraldry recognized with a successful history check. And finally, what they can investigate, and furthermore, what they discover when they investigate it. In some cases, this will mean interacting with some specific feature of the room, an item of interest designed to attract their attention. For example, you might check out the bookcase to discover what books are on it. Now, in other cases, like this one, it can just mean searching the entire room. There's got to be more here. I searched the room. Give me a search check. 25. You find a secret trap door in the floor. And that works. It works just fine. It gets the job done, and you'll often not need to do anything more than that. But there is an advanced technique you can use that looks like this. There's got to be more here. I searched the room. Give me a search check. 25. There are scuff marks on the floor, uh, around the legs of the bed. As if the bed had been moved back and forth a lot? Yeah. I shove the bed to one side and take a look. You find a secret trap door in the floor. Instead of immediately discovering the item of interest, the character instead discovers an indicator pointing in the direction of the item of interest. The advantage is that it allows and even requires the player to receive information and then draw a conclusion. It's a subtle distinction, but instead of the game master telling them about the trapdoor, it was the player who found it. They own that accomplishment. The result increases the player's engagement and reduces the feeling that the game master is just handing them whatever information he feels like. I call this the matryoshka search technique because it turns the interaction into a nested doll. One investigation opens new information, which can then be opened by another investigation in turn. It works even when the indicator really only points at one possible conclusion, as we've seen here, but it can be even more effective if there are multiple explanations possible for the indicator. As a very simple example of this, the game master might say something like, Taking a closer look at the floor, you can see through the dust and grime clear indications of a, of a square-shaped seam. Is it a pit trap? A pedestal that rises up? Do the seams release poison gas or a force cage projected from below? The player is going to have to figure that out, and when they do, it will be their victory, not the dice. Now a word of caution here. One drawback of a matryoshka clue is that it makes the clue more fragile. It's possible, for example, for a PC to spot the scuff marks on the floor and for the player to think, huh, scuff marks, and then never look for the trap door. If you're using the redundancy of the three clue rule, as we discussed in our video on RPG mysteries, then there's no problem with this. The slightly higher probability of missing the matryoshka clue is just one of the many ways in which a clue can be missed or misinterpreted or ignored that the three clue rule is specifically designed to account for. But if your whole scenario unwisely depends on finding one specific trapdoor in one specific bedroom using one specific skill check, using a matryoshka technique may create a problem. But since you shouldn't be designing your scenarios like that anyway, matryoshka clues are a great way to add depth and interaction and investment to your games. If you'd like to add depth to your investment in this channel, Interact now by hitting that subscribe button down below, and add a comment to tell us about the most memorable clue you've seen in an RPG session. While you're down there, check out the uh, font of all knowledge for additional tips and tricks on designing and running mystery scenarios. Good gaming. This is Justin Alexander, and I'll see you at the table.